Today we're going to talk about force. Actually, I'm going to talk about force and you're going to listen and probably giggle from time to time or nod your heads. When we're completely asleep, we have no force. You do a thing too long, you have no force. Why would it be that if you do a thing too long, then you have no force? It becomes mechanical. See how smart you are? Everybody had the answer. Not everybody, of course, would say it, but everybody had the answer. That's right. You do a thing too long and you have no force because it begins to become mechanical. And it will become mechanical. I don't care what it is. You observe yourself long enough in the same way. It will become mechanical. It won't be self-observation anymore. It will just be sleeping, dreaming. Workforce, the force that we're going to talk about this morning, isn't physical force. There's a difference in forces. And we need to understand the difference in force. Workforce is made through some form of self-knowledge. You've got to have some form of self-knowledge in order to make workforce. It doesn't just fall out of the sky. It doesn't just come in a can that you buy at the workstore. It's something that you have to make. And the only way to make it is through some form of self-knowledge. You've got to know something about yourself in order to develop any kind of force, in order to make any kind of force. So it's important to know something about yourself, but how can you know something about yourself? Can you be told? Well, yes, you can be told, but that doesn't mean you'll know anything about yourself. People have been telling you about yourself all your life. You never paid any attention to them. Or if you did pay attention to them, it was to tell them what was wrong with them. Back, you know, to get even. Or to justify yourself. Or to, you know, say, well, they don't like me. That's why they see it that way. But we have all kinds of reasons why we don't listen and why we don't know anything about ourselves. Mostly it's because we go back to square one, pride and vanity. Mostly it's because of pride and vanity. We don't know anything about ourselves because we're so pr proud. We think, we think we already know everything. And when your cup is already full, you're not going to get anything else in it. So we've got to have some form of self-knowledge, and that only comes about through not identifying while you observe yourself. Objective self-observation. Well, that's a very difficult and tall order for most people. So it's something needs to be worked up to. And it's something that generates a little bit of force. And every time it generates a little bit of force, you can use that force to do it some more. To understand force, we need to study what makes us lose force. Why? Why do we need to study what makes us lose force? I'll tell you why. Because workforce is what keeps us awake. You don't have any workforce, you're not awake. And you're not going to be awake. And you're not going to wake up. You won't wake up without some workforce. To understand what force is, you've got to understand that it is what keeps you awake. So how much force do we have? Well, not much. How do we know that? Because we're not very awake very often. That's how we know that. So workforce is very important. We don't know that we don't have force if we're asleep, if we're just a function of our personality, if we're identified with what we are in life. We don't know that we don't have any force. We don't know what it is. We don't know that we don't have it. We don't know anything about it because we don't have to because we're asleep. We're identified with life, with what we are in life, with our jobs. I'm a mother. I'm a father. I'm a this. I'm a that. I'm, I'm a, a, a boss. I'm an employee. Whatever it is that we are in life, we're identified with that and we're busy doing that. We don't know we have no force. We don't know that we're asleep. We're in life. So you're either awake or you're in life. You're either awake and in this work, you're, you're awake and you're working, or you're in life. That's it for us. Each center requires a different kind of force in order to work properly. Okay, that makes sense when you think about it. The intellectual center de demands a certain kind of force. Where the moving center demands an entirely different kind of force. And the emotional center wants a different kind of force in order to, to operate properly. These forces are like energies. So it takes a certain kind of energy to do a certain kind of thing, doesn't it? And you know that sometimes you can be very tired in one area, but you can find energy in another area. 
You know, like intellectually, you'll, you'll be studying, 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 and intellectually, then you just run out of force. You just run out of energy. But you find that if you go up, you get up and you go do something, you start moving around and doing so, doing the dishes or something, you've got force for that. But you were totally wiped out when you were doing the intellectual thing. So you look and there's, there's another center, there's a whole store of force that you can then use. So that's the wonderful thing about this work and what makes the work, the fourth way so great is that if you run out of force in one center, you go to another center and work. And if you run out of force in that center, you can go to another center to work. So there's always a time to work. There's always something that you can do. And that's a good thing. A man may have a great deal of energy in his moving center and nothing in his intellectual center. Depending on a lot of this would depend on someone's center of gravity. For example, Jess can almost always find something to do in his moving center. He's almost always got force there because he's got a strong center of gravity in his moving center. He likes to do things. There are people who just like to keep busy. And it's funny watching some of these people because what happens, and it's not just people who want to keep busy or people who are center, who, are, who have their center of gravity in the moving center. Anybody who has a center of gravity anywhere, here's what they do with it. They look at people who aren't like that and they make them wrong. Well, See, so people who have a strong center of gravity in the moving center, anybody else who doesn't, they're lazy. Wow, what a lazy bum that person is. And, you know, and it may be something entirely different. They, this person may be intellectually doing something or emotionally doing something. You know, that they're just not busy running around. So it's a good idea to shut up not make a lot of judgments about other people because we don't know. We just don't know. And if you and if you need to be working on something, work on yourself. Don't look outside and work on other people. Work on yourself. That's what you really need to be doing. That's your job. Other people are not your job. You you are your job. You are the one that needs fixing, not the other people. You need fixing. And the only one who can fix you is you. A balanced man has force that can pass at different times into different centers. He can use all the centers at the appropriate time. Well, it's easy to see that we're not balanced men. Because we can't, we can't just pass easily from one center to another center. We can't use all of the centers at the appropriate time. <laughs> or else we wouldn't be crazy. If we could use all the centers at the appropriate time when they're supposed to be used, we wouldn't be crazy. But now, when one center is supposed to be used, we end up using another center. When this kind of force is supposed to be used, we steal force from some other center and use it in this center. And then we, and then the center doesn't operate properly. Which is a pretty good example of what happens to the, uh, the formatory apparatus, which is the negative part of the intellectual center. And also the negative part of the emotional center. That what happens is they are using the wrong force. They're getting the wrong forces in there, the wrong energies. They're burning the wrong fuel, so they're pinging. They're missing. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. We have five ordinary centers. The intellectual center, the emotional center, the sex center, the moving, and the instinctive center. Balanced man has right force in the right center at the right time. That's what we're, that's what we're working toward. We're working toward having the right force in the right center at the right time. Well, we, we work toward it because we're not there. And that's okay. It's okay that you're not there, but it, it's good to see that you're not there so that you know that you have something to work toward. So if you already think you're there, then of course you have nothing to work toward. You take yourself for granted, you're satisfied with yourself, and a self-satisfied person goes nowhere in this work. You've got to be dissatisfied with yourself. If you're not dissatisfied with yourself, get dissatisfied with yourself. How do you get dissatisfied with yourself? I'm so wonderful. How could I possibly get dissatisfied with myself? Easy. Just take a look. Just take a look at yourself. Look at what kind of person you actually are. Oh, but I can't see that. Fine. Ask me. I'll tell you what kind of person you actually are. And then you can fight with me about it. And you can argue with me about it. Well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, he's really off this time. <laughs> he was right about everybody else, but he's wrong about me. Boy, did, does this sound familiar? I mean, have you heard this going on in your head? Have you heard little eyes talking like this in your head? I hope you have, because if you haven't heard them, you haven't been working. You haven't been observing yourself. So basically, if we're tired in one center, there are others. But we have a pattern of life to which we rigidly adhere. 
It confines us to narrow experience, to narrow meaning. We take everything the same way all the time. We take everything the same way. Everything. We take it all the same way. And we do it consistently. And that's just what the false personality is like. It takes everything the same way. So this happens, oh, well, they're rejecting me. That happens, oh, well, they're trying to steal from me. This happens, we're suspicious of that. That happens, well, I'll bust his skull. So we just take everything the same way over and over and over and over and over again. And this confines us to narrow experience and narrow meaning. Each center conducts meaning and has its own kind of meaning. So we can, depending upon which center we're in when we're taking in impressions, that will determine what kind of meaning we get from the impressions that we're taking in. So it's important to be in the right center at the right time in order to get the right meaning. If you're not doing that, well, things could get screwed up quickly. Well, and then we'd have a kind of life that looks like the lives we have. <laughs> it's possible to pass from one center to another center, or from one part of the same center to another part of the same center. Ospensky talked about this. He said, if you don't understand this, you really are missing out on a big part of the work. When man begins to think differently, he gains force from changing from one part of the intellectual center to another part of the intellectual center. So as way, by way of an example of this, of being able to move from one part of a center to another part of a center, just changing the way you think about something. Well, what, what is an example of that? Okay, let's say we're in the intellectual center and somebody walks in the door who we have seen before, maybe haven't seen before, and we don't like them on sight. We don't like them. They either remind us of somebody or we know them or whatever. We don't like them. And so we start to think about what we don't like about them. We start to think about what's wrong with them. We start to think about what they did to us. We start to think about what they didn't do for us. We start to think about whatever we start to think about. But at that point, we're in a certain part of the intellectual center. If at that point you remember the work and say, wait a second, I'm going to externally consider this person. In fact, I'm going to externally consider this person so well that I become this person, that I am this person, that I actually get inside this person's skin, that I become this person. When that happens, everything has changed. Everything has changed because you're seeing something now from that person's point of view instead of your point of view. And when you see something from that person's point of view, everything changes. It's all different. So what you've done is you've effectively moved yourself into a different part of the intellectual center by changing your thinking. Of course, it works the other way, too. <laughs> well, you already know that. How to think differently. Mechanical thinking about another. You apply the work to yourself and externally consider the person. When you do that, you plug a leak. And when you plug the leak, you also create force. So go back to our example of somebody comes in and we see them, we start mechanically thinking negatively about them. But then we bring the work up to it and we stop that. So we have plugged the leak. You are losing force by thinking about that person in that way. But then you plug the leak and you start externally considering. Not only do you stop losing force, you actually start creating work force, which is kind of like a bonus. You know, even if you just stop the leak, that would be great in and of itself. But then you actually start creating force, which is even better because then that can be used and it snowballs. You use that and you use that and you use that and you create more and you create more and you plug more leaks. And the next thing you know, you're on top of things. And that's where we want to be. The key to self-change is observing oneself, how one talks, constantly repeated opinions, condemnations of others, what we're proud of, blah, 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 blah. You know the drill I can tell by the way your heads are nodding and you have that ugly look on your face like, oh, yes, I know how I am. Yes, you know how you are. You're a horrible person. So what? Don't identify with it. 
Stop identifying with it. If you have this look on your face like you just ate something really sour, like you were weaned on a pickle or you've been sucking on a lemon, that means you're identifying with what you're seeing. There's nothing. Well, don't identify. It's not you. It's a machine. Get outside the machine and look at it. Yes, that's the machine. That's what it does. Don't own it. Oh, that's me. Oh, what am I going to do? Stop that. Stop that. That's madness. You'll just tear yourself down into nothing. You'll quit doing this work if you keep doing that. You cannot do this work and do that because that's doing the work wrong, wrongly. That's the Southern type, wrongly. No, you know, oh wait, maybe that's, maybe that's the Oriental, wrongly. I don't know. I don't know who it was. I told you to laugh a little today. That was it. That's the little laugh. We've got to see what mechanical parrots we are. You yourself must see that you always say and do the same things. You have got to do this. You have got to see for yourself that you are a parrot, that you are always saying and doing the same thing, that you are so predictable. Everybody in your life knows it except you. Everybody, everybody who knows you knows what you're going to do except you. You think that you're just like awake. And you're not. Ah, what? Newsflash. I'm not awake? No, you're not. Life has built up in us a certain kind of person. That's the kind of person that you are. This is our life experience, our personality, our prison. See, our personality is our prison. That is the very thing that keeps us bound that keeps us stuck, that keeps us from having any kind of freedom, that keeps us from being in the moment, from being alive, awake now, from having new meaning, from having new experience, from having a new way of thinking, from having a new life. That's our prison. You must gradually realize you are absolutely nobody. Nothing but a kind of invention. That's what the false personality is. It's an invention. It's an invention of the machine called life. It's acquired habits. It's acquired thought patterns. It's acquired emotions. It's acquired negative emotions, of course. It's just acquired everything. Nothing belongs to it. Nothing is its own. It's all acquired. It all came from somewhere else. It's eclectic. It's just like a dirt magnet. It just collected all of this dirt from life. And it just got bulkier and bulkier and bulkier until here we are. And that's what we are. And we need to understand that, see that, but without getting upset about it. Realize that you're just an invention. That all the stuff that you are now so sure of will all be gone. It's all an invention. And you don't know it. You think, well, I'm thinking these thoughts. These are my thoughts. These are my ideas. No. No, they're not. They're all acquired. They're not your thoughts. They're not your ideas. They're all acquired. You're a programmed machine. So when you really start to see that, can you see how that takes the wind out of your sails? It's like, it just lets the air out of the balloon. You suddenly begin to realize, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I'm just an invented person. I mean, I'm this invented thing, and life has invented me, and I didn't even have anything to do with it. If you can't observe yourself from a work point of view, you're not going to be able to shift from yourself. You'll have no extra workforce, but you'll only have life force. Well, what does that mean? There's workforce and there's life force. Life force is what makes personality and keeps it going. If you have only life force, you will have that which builds personality and keeps it going. Well, that's great if what you want out of life is personality. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. There's nothing needed now because you will, because you've already developed the personality. Life has developed the personality for you. You may think you developed it, but life developed it for you. But part of the false personality is the illusion that I did this, you know, the pride and vanity. That's all part of it. It's necessary 
for first development, this personality, first education of a human being, our first contact with the earth. So this is absolutely necessary. To have a personality is absolutely necessary. We have to have it. But there comes a point in life when you have an opportunity to develop into something else. You don't have to stay a caterpillar. You don't have to stay a worm for the rest of your life. You don't have to go the way of all flesh. You can develop something other than that. You can develop something more. You can become more. And it's at that point that this work really meets us. But there's another force called the workforce, the force of esoteric teaching, the force that leads to rebirth of man. This work is about transformation of being, becoming a new man. If you're satisfied with who you are, with your personality as it is, if you're satisfied, then this work is not for you. Unless, of course, you have just this niggling feeling, this gnawing sensation somewhere in the back of your mind that there's something more, that everything isn't as perfect as it may seem to be, that maybe it isn't everybody else's fault all the time, that maybe you do have something to do with it. If you've got anything like that going on, then the possibility is there for you to develop. The possibility is there for you to have magnetic center. The possibility is there for you to get some knowledge about yourself or to get some right knowledge so that you can apply it to yourself so you can get some knowledge about yourself and start to develop some force and start to become a different person. Slow transformation. But it is a transformation that can occur. And you can become a new man. And we'll talk next week about how to pursue that path further.